وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We took two sabab, two reasons why low aspiration occurs and inshallah ta'ala we're now going to go into the third which is the bi'a the society and the community and the environment that you're in has an effect on a person's aspiration the scholars they mention the plant if it's next to another plant I mean, if a, or even if a vegetable or a fruit, if you take an apple, a fresh apple, and you take a, an old apple that's rotted, and you place it next to each other, the rotted apple will affect the fresh new apple. If it's, they're both touching, it will affect it. It will pass on the rot uh, and the bacteria onto the fresh apple. Try it yourself. You'll see it. And that's the reality of us. If we're in a toxic society, a toxic community, a toxic household, the reality is we become like that. It weakens your aspiration, puts you down, even, even might kill your aspiration. And it will make you something you are naturally not. وَلِذَلْكَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى mentions that to us in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَالْبَلَدُ الطَّيِّبُ يَخْرُجُ نَبَاتُهُ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِ وَالَّذِي خَبُثَ لَا يَخْرُجُ إِلَّا نَكِدًا Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he tells us, وَالْبَلَدُ الطَّيِّبُ The blessed land, it brings out its vegetations with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one that is filthy, the, the land that is filthy, what it produces is only filth. Filth produces filth. كذلك الإنسان The same is the human being. إذا نشأ في بيئة صالحة If he grows up in a good society, من بيت طيب He grows up in a good household. ومجتمع A society تشيعو فِيهِ الفضيلة, that virtue and righteous action and nobility is gushing from that society, coming from that society, springing from that society. And a ومدرستين, a school تعنى بدين الطلاب وخلقهم. And this, your son or your daughter is going to a school where their religion is protected for them and their manners and etiquette is protected for them. Not a school that they've been taught about LGBT and they've been taught about this and يعني, what they learn from their, their, their school, the akhlaqiyat, the, the, the things that they learn from it is not bad. If it's good, remember it's going to produce good children. Um, so that is one of the sabab of dunuul uh, himma. The fourth, inshallah ta'ala, is قِلَّةُ وُجُودِ الْمُرَبِّينَ الْأَفْذَادِ وَالْمُعَلِّمِينَ الْقُدْوَاتِ The murabbin are very little. Those who nurture are very little. And the teachers who can be taken as role models are also little. And this matter is مِنْ أَعْظَمِ أَسْبَابِ دُنُوُ الْهِمَّةِ It's one of the greatest reasons for low aspiration. فَمِمَّا يُؤْسَفُ One of the things that Saddens really is قِلَّةُ الْمُرَبِّينَ الْأَفْذَادِ We don't have many people to do tarbiyah. And we don't have many مُعَلِّمِينَ النَّاصِحِينَ الْقُدُوَاتِ uh, Teachers who are sincere advisors who can also be taken as role models. الَّذِينَ, يو, يو, الذين uh, 
يربون طلابهم على نشتان المعالي وتطلاب الكمالات who nurture their student upon high aspiration and they also nurture their students on um, noble integrity for example you find some teachers man la hamma lahu he has no other desire illa ilqa'u ad-dars fa hasb all he wants to do is to teach the students the knowledge and he leaves بغض النظر عن توجيه الطلاب and doesn't give much importance to uh, correcting the students and directing them in the, in the right direction وتربيتهم and nurturing them correctly ونصح لهم advising them sincerely he doesn't give importance to that his concern is only to give the lesson and to go there are some people like that um, وتجد فيهم من يؤدي درسه بكل تثاقل وبرود and there's another type of person who finds it very hard to teach. When he has to teach, he's dragging his leg, doesn't have the energy for it and enthusiasm. Has no re- he doesn't have that drive. It, the, the teaching and the class that he has to do is like to him, Jabalun ala izahatihi. It's like a mountain that is placed on his shoulders, which he has to move. Wabitali, with that being said, يَفْتَقِدُ الدَّرْسُ الْحَرَارَةُ وَالْرُوحِ And the lesson when he even gives it, it doesn't have that energy, that enthusiasm that it should have. So, فَتَقِلُّ فَائِدَةُ الطُّلَّابِ مِنَ الدَّرْسِ So the students, they really don't benefit much from it. It's so boring. He's monotone when he speaks. He doesn't want to do it. He's, dr- he's not driven. He's just pulling his leg. فَلَا يَجِدُونَ الْيَدَ الْحَائِنَةِ So the students, they don't actually find um, someone who cares فلا يجد لي... uh, فلا يجدون اليد الحانية. The students they don't find A caring hand والقلب الرحيم A merciful heart والنفس الأبية And a soul That holds itself with high morals التي تنشد عزهم وتروم فلاحهم That makes these young kids These young youths Push them to their potentials وَتَرُومُ فَلَاحَهُمْ And look out for their success. وَتَجِدُ مِنَ الْمُعَلِّمِينَ You find from the teachers مَنْ هُوَ ضَعِيفُ النَّفْسِ A teacher who's weak in himself. He is a, he's a weak teacher. As a person. مَهْزُومُ الْوُجْدَانِ مَهْزُومُ الشَّخْصِيَةِ His personality, his character is very low. سَاقِطُ الْهِمَّةِ He has very low aspiration. ضَيِّقُ النَّظَرِ He's a narrow-minded individual. يُرَبِّ الطُلَّابَ عَلَى الْخَوَرِ he nurtures the students upon fear tactics and he scares them. That's all he nurtures them upon. Blind following. If I say something, follow me. If I say something, follow it. Don't question me. That's what he te- nurtures the students upon. And because of all of that, يخرج الجيل الذي تربى على أمثال هؤلاء جيلا جينا. From here comes out what? يَخْرُجُ الْجِيلَ الَّذِي تَرَبَّ عَلَىٰ أَمْثَالِ هَؤُلَىٰ A people who've been nurtured upon these type of people, who've been nurtured by these people, a person who is jaban, he himself is scared. ضعيف النفس, your teacher is weak in his himself. قانع الدون, the teacher chooses low things. So the student gets inspired by someone like that. He doesn't fall far from his teacher, becomes like that. The fifth, inshallah ta'ala, uh, reason for low aspiration is wasail al-a'lam, social media. Social media, social media, social media plays a big role. For wasail al-a'lam laha dawrun khatirun fi tarbiya Social media has a big role in nurturing the people. And it also has qudra kabira ala al-iqna'ah. Social media also has a great ability to uh, convince the people. I and mean, social media can easily convince someone. وَصِيَاغَةِ الْأَفْقَارِ And social media is really able to project its opinions. وَلَهَا دَوْرٌ بَالِغٌ فِي تَنْحِيَةِ دَوْرِ الْأُسْرَةِ وَالْمَدْرَسَةِ And it can have a large effect 
on people's family lives. They can also have a great effect on people's education, their schools. A positive or a negative effect. You can have it. فَإِذَا مَنْ حَرَفَتْ تِلْكَ الْوَسَائِلْ قَادَتِ النَّاسَ إِلَى الْهَاوِيَةِ When social media becomes corrupt, which is the situation for many, the type of social media outlets that they're watching is corrupt. So what it's leading them to is destruction. قَادَتِ النَّاسَ إِلَى الْهَاوِيَةِ Led and leads many people to destruction. وَأَصْبَحَتْ مَعَاوِلَ هَدْمٍ وَتَخْرِيبٍ and it becomes a source of destruction and an annihilation of a person's morality and conduct. وَأَدَوَاتِ فَسَادٍ وَانْحِلَالٍ And it becomes corruption and devastation for many people. وَمَدَارِسَ لِتَمْيِيعِ الْأَخْلَاقِ And it becomes a school for many people where their manners and their etiquette is destroyed. وَقَتْلِ الْمُرُوءَةِ وَالرُّجُولَةِ And a person loses their morality and dignity and their manhood. Social media has destroyed many people's lives and continues to do so. It's given a voice to the aradhil, the lowest of low. People who will never be spoken to and no one will give them any attention. People who suffer from um, يعني, people who suffer from mental health issues, who need help, who deserve to be cared for, people are taking those type of people as comedy and they're laughing at them on social media. Subhanallah, many years back I remember there was a man who had illnesses, but someone made a social media outlet for him and they were recording him. And so because he's not mentally stable, he does things that, and people are commenting and they're laughing. And it was a series of comedy for him. And it was a series, episode one, episode two, episode three. And social media, they were releasing it on there. Gharib. He needs help. They're making money from him. Or whatever they're making from him. Or fame. Or that's what they're doing. Is that something that would have happened if social media wasn't there? Those, are, those type of people would, be, would have been cared for. They would have been uh, in good, caring hands. But now, it's all what you can put out there. Everyone put out everything there. Privacy is gone. And what people are taking from there is low aspiration. Six. The sixth thing that affects a person's aspiration is the wife and your children having on you weight. As Allah Taala told us in the Quran, your wives and your children are a fitna. And the same for the woman. Her husband can be for her a means of low aspiration. Because of him, she's going far. She's seeking knowledge. She's going out there. She's benefiting. He's the one who's not doing that. He's dragging his legs. He's not giving a lot of consideration to learning the deen. He's joking about it. He's mocking it at times. So the, 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 the situation can happen for both parties. It can happen for the men and, and the women. So this partner of yours becomes what? They become an obstacle from you worshipping Allah. Your wife is either stopping you from seeking knowledge or she's stopping you from worshipping Allah or your husband is doing that to you. He's stopping you from seeking knowledge. He is stopping you from worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to achieve your high goals. وَذَلِكَ بِسَبَبِ رِقَّةِ دِينِهَا and that might be because of the weak religion that this wife of yours possesses. Or it could be a weak religion that your husband possesses. It's true for both parties. Or the demands that your wife is putting forward is making you unable to reach your goal in life. And the same for the wife. The minute she says, I want to go, I've, I've got a class in the masjid, I need to learn the Quran, I, I need to go study uh, 
you know, uh, the religion, he tells her, oh, go cook for me. Go clean this for me. Do this for me. He demands just so she doesn't study and learn. And also times is to expose her, belittle her, and ridicule her. The same happens from the wives and the husbands, both parties. So children and your wife can be like that to you. وَكَذَلِكَ الْأَوْلَادِ قَدْ يَكُونُونَ فِتْنَةً وَبَلَاءً لِوَالِدِيهِمْ Your children can be a fitna to you. Mothers experience that on first hand. They experience that very often. That they want to read Quran. The child starts to run at the parent, uh, the mother and say, Mom, Mom, so-and-so said this to me. So they fight amongst themselves and she can't read even a page. They're a fitna to her. Also, they are a fitna, the same to the father. He's scared for his children. He's striving for their future. فَتَرَاهُ يَخَافُ عَلَيْهِمْ He's scared for them. وَيَحْرِسُ عَلَى تَأْمِينِ مُسْتَقْبَلِهِمْ He wants to get, he wants to put and reassure a future for his children. وَيَخْشَى مِنْ ضَيَاعِهِمْ بَعْدَ فِرَاقِهِ الدُّنْيَا He's also scared that when he leaves this world, his children, how are they going to become like? So he's, 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 the fitna that they have on him. The same with the mother. She's worried about her children, their food, their lifestyle, their education, their learning, their future and how they are. The, the fitna happens for both power parents. So, so much so that the parent is no longer able to achieve or work towards their own future. أَمَّا إِذَا انْحَرَفُوا عَنْ سَوَاءِ السَّبِيلِ فَلَا تَسَلْ عَنْ شَقَاءِ الْأَبِي وَحَسْرَتِهِ And if those children deviate from the straight path, then the stress that the father goes through and the mother goes through, Wallahi, فَلَا تَسْأَلْ فَلَا تَسْأَلْ عَنْهُ Don't ask about that. Subhanallah. Have you ever met a mother who's crying and she can't stop crying because of her son who went off, who's now selling drugs and he's into something haram? Have you seen the, the father, how he feels when his son falls off the religion? The way he becomes sad uh, feeling that he has. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu inna min azwajikum wa awladikum aduwan lakum aduwan lakum fahdharuhum Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu those of you who believe inna min azwajikum from amongst your wives are those who are وَأَوْلَادِكُمْ And also from amongst your children, there are those who are عَدُوَ لَكُمْ An enemy to you. فَحْذَرُوهُمْ Be cautious of them. Allah is saying to us, O oh men, there are wives out there of yours. Some men, not every man, whose wives are an enemy to them. And there are some children who are an enemy to their parents. فَحْذَرُوهُمْ Be cautious of them. How is that your wife could be an enemy to you and your children be an enemy to you? Sometimes a person, because of their children, he does things that are not allowed in the Sharia, just for his children. Father may steal a wealth just so he can provide for his children. He might even kill someone just so he can provide for his children. But that is the early Salaf, rahimahumullah, the righteous women, they would say to their husbands every day when they leave the house, they'll say to their partner, honey, when you leave the house, make sure that you bring us that which is halal. Fear Allah wa ta'ala in what you bring home to us and our, our children. If you can't find anything, you have nothing to be blamed for. You've strove, you've exerted the efforts. You can come home with nothing and no one's going to blame you. Those were the righteous women. The women today, by all means necessary, bring me what you can. And if you can't, you're a bum. You can't achieve anything in life. Insults, name calling. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةً Allah says, no, that your wealth and your children are a fitna and a trial and a tribulation on you. Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith, Al-Imam Hakim narrated in his Mustadrak, Al-Tabarani narrated in his Mu'jam, Sheikh Nasir rahimahullah authenticated it, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, إِنَّ الْوَلَدَ مبخلة مجبنة مجهلة محزنة 
that the child is a mabkhala. Because of your child, you become bakhil. Mabkhala means here, because of your child, you become bakhil. You used to give. And now because of your child, you're not going to give. You're going to be like, if I give, my children are going to suffer. My children need this. Majbana. You become a coward because of your children. You were brave before. You used to take risks in life. But now you're not because of your children. Someone insult you. You would take your rights from them before. Huh? Now you're not. Now you say, if I get harmed, my children are going to be without a father. I can't do this. You used to take risks in business and go for ventures and invest here and invest there. But what did you do? You now don't take the, you do not take those risks because you're scared for your children. You're also majhala. You chose ignorance just because of your children. How many parents stopped studying and learning because of their children and use that as a reason? Some really do because of their children, but never go back to education. Rather, I'll say something the side benefits. Some parents think that I was studying and I had to choose between you and me. And I chose you guys and your education. And that's why I didn't pursue my, uh, my education. Parents, what I want to tell you this, is, what, I, what I want to say to you all parents is that that actually works against you. Because many parents say that to their children, hoping that the child will work and study. But what you've just told your child is that without education, you can make it in life like you did. Okay, And it also makes the child have low aspiration because you yourself didn't set yourself high aspiration. So what you should do is make sure you study as well and learn and stop giving yourself excuses and try to justify because of you guys, because of this and because of that. Study. And the word mahzanatun that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, it means that you become huzna. Huzn means that you become uh, stressed because of them. So the children are mabkhalatun, majbana. From your children, you gain the characteristics of bukhul, majority of the people. And you also become jaban, which is someone who is uh, f afraid and scared. And you also become majhala, you choose ignorance over seeking knowledge. Mahzana, you become saddened, stressed because of your children. You're always sad because of them. فَالزَّوْجَةُ وَالْأَوْلَادُ كَثِيرًا مَا يَثْنُونَ ذَا الْهِمَّةِ عَنْ مُرَادِهِ Majority of the times, wives and your children, they take away from you high aspiration. How many honorable people? وَلِهَذَا فَكَمْ عَانَ الْكِرَامُ وَالشُّجَعَانُ مِنْهُمْ وَمِنْ تَخْذِيلِهِمْ How many have complained about honorable people, brave people, their women and their wives? A poet explained how he became after obeying um, when he obeyed his wife in his desires and he, and he did everything for her and surrendered everything to her. He said, means the wife. Malik ibn Raybin also talks about his conversation with his daughter um, who was stopping him uh, from going to the jihad for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She said, تَقُولُ ابْنَتِي إِنَّ انْطِلَاقَكَ وَاحِدًا إِلَى الرَّوْعِ يَوْمًا تَارِكِي لَا أَبَالِيَا ذَرِينِي مِنَ الْإِنْشِقَاقِ أَوْ قَدْمِي لَنَا مِنَ الْحَدِيثَانِ وَالْمَنِيَّةِ وَاقِيَا ستتلف نفسي أو سأجمع هجمة ترى ساقييها يألمان التراقية جويه بن نظر also told us about what happened between him and his wife and some scholars they say this is not جويه بن نظر it's actually حاتم بن طا حاتم uh, الطائي who had a slave girl, slave girl called uh, طريفة and some say no it was Juwayh ibn Nadrin, who had a wife called Turaifa. He talks, he talks about um, what she blamed him for uh, in terms of giving. He was a very you know, generous man. Hatim al-Ta'i is a very well-known man for his generosity. 
يعني حاتم الطائي he resided in a place called Ha'il in Saudi Arabia current modern day Ha'il and he was known for his generosity كان يضرب إليه بالكرم يعني he was an example when it came to generosity and giving so his wife blamed him a lot about giving and why are you always giving why are you always giving so he talks about it how she blamed him and he said it in lines of poetry he said قَالَ الطُّرَيْفَةُ مَا تَبْقَى دَرَاهِمُنَا وَمَا بِنَا سَرَفٌ فِيهَا وَلَا خَرَقُ إِنَّا إِذَا اجْتَمَعَتْ يَوْمًا دَرَاهِمُنَا ظَلَّتْ إِلَى سُبُلِ الْمَعْرُوفِ تَسْتَبِقُ مَا يَأْلَفُ الْدِرْهَمُ الْمَضْرُوبُ خِرْقَتَنَا إِلَّا يَمُرُّ عَلَيْهَا ثُمَّ يَنْطَلِقُ حَتَّى يَصِيرَ إِلَى نَذْلٍ يُخَلِّدُهُ يَكَادُ مَنْ سِرِّهِ إِيَّاهُ يَنْمَزِقُ ولا يعني I don't mean by الدعوة إلى التمرد على الزوجة والأولاد that you should become uh, evil to your wife and your, your, your children and you should treat them in an unpleasant way you know وهضمهم حقوقهم and that you strip them from their rights والتقصير في رعايتهم and you're short in fulfilling their rights I don't mean by that But what I mean is بقدر ما هو دعوة للتوازن ووضع الأمور في نصابها Look at the matter and scale it appropriately. appropriately. Place everything in its right place and put everything in its right place without going overboard and يعني, don't exaggerate and don't become lackadaisical in that issue. I'm going to stop there inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan. And Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allahum wa bihamdi. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two-second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the Day of Judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the Deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two-second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.